you're about to witness, sorry, that's quite loud, the wonderful world of Emily's driving. I wish you the best of luck. You are safe because you're not in here. Enjoy. Here, There's my fiance about to drive off. He's got a job. So then uh, what I do is wait and wait and wait. So get used to these videos because you're now my friend. Okay, cool. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, we met three years ago. We were meant to get married two days ago. That didn't happen. COVID came in and fucked that one up. Um, meant to be flying out on my honeymoon, our honeymoon, I need to stop doing that, our honeymoon, um, right now, which again, isn't happening. So, I guess I should tell you about how we came to where we are. Oh wow. Well, I worked in the city as in sales, making almost six figures a year. Expensive, extravagant lifestyle living in Wimbledon. What's this? I just think it's society in general, like funnels you and makes you believe that living that lifestyle is what it's about. Having money, having your mortgage, having your marriage, having your kids. I was like on that path and I was depressed by it because I, deep down it wasn't what I wanted and I hadn't even realised that yet. And once I met Lee, I was like, oh my God, I've been missing this. He had no, nothing, not a pot to piss in, no money at all, horrendous amount of debt, doing something completely selfless for shit money. And he was like, oh, I'm really happy. The only reason why I stayed in that job was because I was paying two and a half grand rent a month. And then I was like, well, if I got rid of that, then maybe I'd be able to quit my job one day. And that's what happened. That's what you do when your child eats, you eat. <laughs> and she is my child. This is the only child we're having. It's a pain in the ass, but I love her. So these are all the people that are very famous in our lives. That's Lee and his two brothers and his granddad. This is Lee and his best mate winning a croquet tournament, even though Lee has never played croquet before. And then this is the day after we got engaged when we got back. And there's me and the dog, Tara, who I love, obviously. She was found in Tara Canyon in Montenegro. We adopted her when we dropped off the old van. We picked her up and dropped it off in one, one go, basically. I'd always been saying that I want a dog one day, but I never thought it was going to be now or anytime soon. So I was like, oh, just send me pictures. I just want to see what she's like. And then I took one look at her and fell in love with her. And that was it. Things in a van always look super messy because you've got like this much space, but it's trying to cram everything in. And yeah, wardrobe space, wardrobe space. Not enough for me personally, because a girl needs more than that. I mean, I don't have many things, but this is my pride and joy because it's huge, the fridge. There's just, I can fit so many, there's so much room for activities in there. And I love cooking, so. You wait there. So this is the garage. We got this from America. We had to like pay for special shipping for it, but it's so worth it. So it's like an extra secure storage space for all the smelly dog stuff and the smelly shoes. And then we take it out and then we get a hose and we just pressure wash it. 
instead of, you know, it's stinking out the van. Um, there we go. I lock everything up because obviously people are snatching dogs now. So I never leave her in here. And I tell you what, we had the door open and we were standing like here, just hovering, like nothing on us because the door's open, smoking. Police came up, obviously saw, and they were like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I live in this. I said, look, my, my fiance's in there. And they were like, oh my God, sorry. We thought you were eyeing it up because you were trying to steal it because there's been loads of thefts on this road, like snatch and grabs. Um, I can replace everything in this van, but I can't replace the photos. I can't replace the little things, which obviously are the least expensive, but you know, they're the most valuable to me, which I find is the most important thing. Sorry, after you. Thank you. Um, hello, darling. Hopefully none of the, that kind of stuff happens. He'll be back from work like seven to take over from the dog. But sometimes he gets off late. So it's, you never know. You never know. I teach English to kids in China and Vietnam. So I only work in the mornings because of the time difference. I hope my husband doesn't mind eating all this aubergine tonight. And then they've said like, if you ever want to, you can come out to China and you can work in the schools or Vietnam, work in the schools for like six months to a year, which I would love to do, but it will be after Tara's had her life with us. I love kids, I just don't want to have them. I want to be able to hand them back and be like, you know, if they start crying, I know that I've only got like an hour of it where if you have one, yeah. Doesn't it get hot in here? It's 27 degrees right now in here. It's hot. I need to change. Oh, you're a hot dog as well, aren't you, Ta? Let's go. Shall we, madam? Come on then. Let's go. You are like a child. Which is the only thing that holds us back and gives us plans and stuff like that. Um, she's like three and a half, almost four. And boxers only really live until they're like eight, ten years old max. So we'll have our life here and then once she's gone, then go to Vietnam and teach there. I'd love that. But like we can go on holidays to America and Canada and Australia while we still have Tara because we can just get someone to look after her for a couple of weeks. But to go out and explore there for months and months, we wouldn't do that until, until she's gone. Which I don't like. I love the fact that we will explore one day, but I hate the fact it's because it will be doing that because we don't have her anymore. I wish that Tara was exactly the way she was and she was smaller. That would be nice. She's a big dog. It's a small van. A lot of people compare dogs to kids and stuff. I don't. Like, I know that having her is a full-time job. My choice was that I always envisaged me having a dog one day. I, I didn't envisage... I think when I was really young, I did. Definitely envisaged myself having children and stuff. But now that I'm an adult and I've realised what makes me tick and what, what makes me happy and what makes me sad, I understand that bringing a child into that world, it might not fit because 
we don't want to stay in the same place. And me and Lee, I mean, I can't imagine us being parents like that. It just seems funny. We'll be the cool auntie and uncle, but everyone will give us their kids for a weekend and then we'll teach them really bad behaviours and take them out and party with them when they're like 18. <laughs> but I'm quite happy being the cool aunt. And then they can just come stay with us and stuff.